do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. If you know, you know. If you don't know that song, then you're not supposed to know. Simple. Hi, it's the Boom Wagwan, bro, bro, bro. Welcome back to another installment of Edutainment, the place where you're laughing, being entertained, but most importantly, where you're learning something that you can apply to your own personal life and make it better. How are you lot doing today? Say it with me. I'm doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. No cap. Hoodies in the description. No cap. 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 But today's video is brought to you by GQ Sports, my first million, courtesy of Seattle football players Shaquille and Shaquam Griffin. This is how they spent their first million. And hopefully we will learn some financial principles that we can apply to our own personal lives. Because according to statistics, statistics, <laughs> say that five times, football players on average are the first athletes in their industry to go broke after their playing days are done. Careers, you know, especially football, they're, they're cut short real quick and their contracts aren't guaranteed. And, and, and if I was to, you know, kind of list the players who have the greatest financial problems, it is absolutely your football players are top on the list there. Um, and the ones that do the best with their money are the baseball players. Most baseball players might get a good signing bonus, but most of the baseball players, their careers take a long time before they get to the major leagues. They rode the bench or, you know, not just rode the bench, but they, uh, uh, you know, for a long time, but they rode the bus. So when this money started coming in, what was your first move? When it comes to how I spent and saved, I actually learned that from my DB coach, Andre Curtis. And he was saying the best way to do it is you put up 80, and you spend 20, and you'll never have to worry about looking for your next dollar if something all goes wrong. I kind of got mine from um, Beach Mode. I mean, something that he was doing is live off his endorsements and saving his football money. You know, I was blessed and fortunate to get a lot of endorsements. So whatever I make from him, my endorsement money, I just use that and I create a budget within myself. You know, the money that I make from doing my, my, my day job, that's what I'm going to build up to make sure I make further investments and make sure, you know, we have long money. Shout out to Beast Mode. Shout out to Beast Mode. Save your chicken. Take care of your chicken. Take care of your chicken. Look, I'll say like this though, right? It's a vulnerable time for a lot of these young dudes, you feel me? They don't be taking care of their chicken right, you feel me? So if it was me or if I had an opportunity to let these little get, uh, Young Sahibs know something. I say take care of y'all money, African, because that shit don't last forever. Now, I done been on the other side of a retirement, and it's good when you get over there and you can do what the fuck you want to. So I tell y'all right now while y'all in it, take care of y'all bread. So when y'all done, go ahead and take care of yourself. So while y'all at it right now, take care of y'all bodies. You know what I mean? Don't take care of y'all chicken. You feel me? They'll take care of your mentals because look, we ain't lasting that long. Bro. Say you, for the first time in a while, you're making 100K. You're feeling good. You're feeling, you know, you're feeling blessed. Or <laughs> you went to law school, med school. Now you're, you know, you're making the six figures. You can get complacent, you know, with the income that you have coming in and forget to, like, yo, let me deal with this debt ASAP. Because <laughs> I saw this um, one other. Uh, uh, glamour video, right? How, about how this anastologist, anastologist, I think, I think it is. I think she makes about a million dollars per year. If I'm correct, she makes like upper 300k, upper 300k, but she still had like almost 30,000 or so in student loans at 41, right? Like, just take care of your student loans, bro. Like, why is that still there at 41? <laughs> so if you're smart. Right? If you're smart, you will always make it a habit to pay yourself first ASAP. Okay, you have $2,000 coming every two weeks. How much of this can I save? Can I just save $100? $100 of that, can I save it? Put it in my savings account? Boom, right? And even you can even call your bank. I want to automatically deposit $2 every two weeks or every week. Just transfer it automatically to my savings account. That in itself, without thinking about it, right? Trying to automate things as much as possible, will help buffing, fatten, there we go, fatten your savings account. Oh my God! Wow! Oh my God! Not short. 
Well, we talked about how we saved our money. Now I want to tell you guys how we spent our money. The very first thing that I bought when I made it to the league was my dad's 1972 Caprice Coupe. So my dad is a real old school car fan. We fixed it up, put rims on it, stereo system, the whole nine. And um, he fell in love with it. It was the first time I actually seen my dad cry. The same car that I bought, my dad won't let me drive it. But it's all good. It's That's a nice car. It's a really nice car. That's what do. After all the arrangements and stuff to get done, it came up to a 97,000. Yep. Love you, Dad. You know, when I see athletes buy their parents' cars, I always wonder if the parents have a mortgage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> it's just me. It's just me, you know? If they still have a mortgage payment. You know, you know what I'm saying? That money could go towards the mortgage or pay off the pay off the whole house. I yo, I, one day I'm re I'm patiently waiting for a day where I can make a YouTube video where I talk about paying off my parents' mortgage. <laughs> that yo, that one right there, that would be the most that would be the proudest moment in my life, right? <laughs> And then they can never use the excuse, oh, I brought you, I brought you to Canada. You know, you know, as an immigrant parent, you know, <laughs> your parents always talk about, oh, we sacrificed so much to get you here. Don't, don't shame us. Don't, don't, no, don't, don't uh, bring shame to our name. Don't bring shame to our last name or something like that. So I feel like at that point, if I'm able to pay for their mortgage and just pay off the house in full, now we even. <laughs> Now we're even. <laughs> so, like, he didn't buy a new car. He just fixed it up. But still, you know, a car is, regardless, is always a depreciating uh, thing. So, assets. Anything that's making you more money, right? For example, YouTube editing software. By paying for that, you're going to make more money. Or anything you buy now, that's going to save you more money in the long run. For example, you make the decision to buy a higher quality shoe, right? And maybe it's $70 as opposed to a low budget shoe from uh, some next place. The higher cost shoe will probably last you for many years to come. Whereas the low budget shoe may only last you for a year and you may end up paying more to replace the shoe in the long run by either buying a new shoe. Maybe you finally decide to buy the higher quality shoe or just buy a place in the shoe that you have with another low quality shoe. The next thing we did on our birthday, actually, 22 years old, we gave everybody in our immediate family $20,000 a piece. My oldest brother, the middle child, my sister, my mom, and my dad. But it was a nice gift to give on our actual birthday. It was crying, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's the best reaction for us. Best reaction to have people crying on their birthday. So it's great. I was so happy to go to the bank just to do it. You guys give them cash? Cash. Cash. Yep, we wanted them to start counting themselves, so they knew we were serious about it. Cash gifts for the family on our birthday, 100K. Not much, it's a little bit. <laughs> you can't, you know, there's no really downside to that per se. The only downside would be how their parents or their family members ended up, you know, uh, using my money. Also wonder how they stave off vultures. Yo, they seem like quality, like nice guys. You know those ones where you can just tell People had home training. The boss of you and you shut up. Give me a turn to speak. <sighs> We've talked about. Let me speak. How does that feel? I can definitely tell they had home training. <laughs> Sir, ma'am, you know, <laughs> my <laughs> my parents put me in cadets, bro. Anywhere I go, it's like cadets is like low key a division of like the army, but just like more of a kid version of it, right? You, you march, you do salutes, sir, ma'am, flight sergeant, corporal. I was an air cadet, you know, I was an air cadet. So <laughs> all I'm gonna say about giving the gifts is that at least they didn't buy them a car. <laughs> In other past My First Million video, when they buy their parents a car, right? Or their sibling, family member a car, it's not just the car that they're buying, right? They buy, usually they buy it new. So first you have the depreciating uh, cost of the car. Then you have the maintenance fees, then you have the car insurance, and then the, any other things or uh, repair stuff that may occur with said car, right? So 
anytime you buy stuff, it's never just the purchase. It's always like the opportunity cost and the cost that are associated with maintaining a certain item, you know? Like, yo, there's levels to this shit. There's so much, so, yo. <laughs> let me, yo, let me talk about shit real quick, okay? Let me talk about I'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information. Do you understand? A bad boy piece of- Even in terms of dating, right? Men are always talking about, oh, if I get my money up, if I stay on my purpose, the girls will come to me, right? Or I'll get more girls. But if for the past three, four, five years, you've never interacted with girls, never gone on dates, you're gonna be rusty. And po possibly, you're gonna be socially awkward. Now, you're a guy with a lot of money, his status, money, wealth, whatever, and you could easily, arguably, <laughs> very well get played. <laughs> Cause you've ignored women, you've never really took the time to understand female nature, women in general, because it's one thing for someone online to tell you women are this way, don't trust women, women will use you. But then to be in, in person with a beautiful girl and you're not used to it, bro, <laughs> her beauty will still phase you. You won't be unfazed like as if you were someone who's been interacting with beautiful girls on a regular basis. That was a little tangent, but let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> You guys buy yourselves anything? Yeah, we bought a few things. <laughs> the first car we got was technically wasn't a car. It was a three-wheel motorcycle called a Vanderhall that goes 210 miles per hour. It's pretty dangerous and fast. Be careful. So it's like a collectible. You can take it to the And track. that was 30K cash. They got like that little old school look, so it looked like a collector's item. So no matter what cars you have, it's all gonna look good. Like, man, that's a nice motorcycle you got in there. Like, yes, yeah, it's nothing more than going fast. So. Top speed so far, I think I got it at 165. With a helmet on. Yeah, oh, definitely, sure. definitely got a helmet on, Big definitely. Helmet. Motorcycles, I've never, yo. <laughs> I've seen some next data or something like that, how motorcycles are, you're more likely to die riding a motorcycle. That one seems more safe based on the, compared to the regular motorcycles I see. But why would you be, why would you increase your likelihood to die? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> next thing that we bought wheel wide was a K&M 900. It's another three wheel. So you got the one that you sit in and you can just drive like a car. You got the one that rides like a motorcycle. And that was 10K. Okay. We, we doing good. We doing good. Oh, we, we can. We can now. The next thing that we bought, 2019 um, BMW i8. So, flew in from Arizona. Yeah. Literally off the plane, my older brother and my sister picked us up and we went straight to the BMW dealership. Bought the i8 and then they let us drive it outside the store. And that was 100K even. 100K BMW i8. See the car thing again, bro. The car thing again. A hundred k on a pair, on, on on a car, <clears throat> on a depreciating asset. So the question is, should you buy new, and have the heavy depreciation in the beginning, but have very little repair cost, or buy a car that has had a lot of depreciation that's occurred and risk the repair cost? And the answer to that is what I call the sweet spot. And the sweet spot occurs at about the second year and goes till the eighth year. And that would, if you're putting on 12,000 miles a year, that would be between 24,000 and 96,000 miles. And this sweet spot is what I consider the best financial choice to own a car. Cars are built so well these days that the sweet spot is at 24,000 to 96,000 miles. So this scenario, you're going to get the best possibility of getting the car for the best price with the least amount of maintenance during your ownership. Appreciating asset, bro. Almost 200K combined from the, for the dad's car and uh, the BMW i8, and then also the so essentially all together, 190k, almost 240k on cars, bro. <laughs> Yo, <coughs> what guam, bro? What guam with you? What are you saying, bro? Oh my days! Oh my days! Chai, 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 chai.
<clears throat> it's simple, man. It's very simple. Okay, if you want to buy a car, buy it used, man. Buy it used. If a car is made this year, 2020, wait two years and get that car. When you buy cars, you have to have a balance between avoiding the depreciation of a new car, but also avoiding the heavy maintenance costs of a heavily older car. The best way to buy a car is as follows. For most people, they may in fact buy a car new and more than likely, they'll be paying a car note of say maybe $200. So within 10 months, they would have spent $2,000 paying off the car. Rather, what you can do is keep the $200 to yourself, pay, pay yourself as a deposit in your savings account or a separate savings account specifically for your uh, car, okay? And then after 10 months, you have $2,000, right? That you didn't give, essentially. I'm saying give, but pay to the uh, dealership, the car dealership. Now, you find whatever car you can, you can get with those $2,000, use it, operate it, okay? Next year, okay? Another $200, save it up. Within 10 months, you now have $2,000 in cash, and a $2,000 valued car, okay? Now you sell your car, use the cash, and now you can get a car valued at maybe four or $5,000. Pay for it in cash again, or pay for it like, you know, outright, without taking out a loan, essentially, a car loan or whatever. And then you repeat the process again and again until you, maybe you ultimately have a $15,000, $20,000 car, or, you're making a substantial amount of income now within maybe three, four, five years that it won't take you as long to buy a $20,000 car. I'm Donald Trump and I approve these nuts. <laughs> Got it. But that's all I'm saying, bro. Hey, next vehicle was the 2020 G-Wagon. We actually got the G-Wagon while we was in Seattle. Roughly 200K. When you guys get these cars, do you customize them or you buy them? Buy of course you customize them. You don't want your G-Wagon like his G-Wagon, no. So with the G-Wagon, what we did was we for sure had to get the limit. Quick note about customizing a car. Whenever you customize something, it's gonna be harder to resell in the future. For example, jewelry. Customize jewelry. Who's buying jewelry with your name and your initials on it? No. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, just a future reference for anybody out there in their interwebs. Mozine tent, because people take pictures in our car, have it all the time, all the time. We gotta lift it. I wanna say hi so people can see me over there. Getting it wrapped, actually as we speak. So this whole car is wrapped in matte black and then like the edges of the car, maybe like little parts of the rims, you're gonna, you're gonna wrap that in that matte red. So it kind of pops out a little bit. We got our own little symbol. Uh, SG symbol. Actually, I'm wearing it right now. We engraved that in every single car we have. Everything is pretty much custom, so when they see our car, they know it's our car. And this is our $200,000 G-Wagon. That's the G-Wagon. It's another car, but it's not ours. Not ours. This is a retirement gift to my mom. The car, actually, I've been getting it worked on and wrapped. So hopefully it's not coming out before she see it. So she'll see this car Saturday. She has no idea. Remember? Retirement gift to the mom. Fix the old car for the dad. What about the mortgage? Is there a mortgage? I want to know if there's a mortgage. I want to know if they're still paying a mortgage. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> Do your parents still have a mortgage after you get you fixed up their car and stuff? Last time you got any sleep. I don't know, two, three days, not important. I don't need sleep, I need answers. Brother bought her um, 2021 ALC 500 Tudor Coupe. Lexus, $150,000 car. Then my brother actually bought her a $20,000 Rolex to go inside the car for a retirement gift. So yeah, she had no idea this is coming. Hey mom, have a retirement from your boys right here. Hope you really enjoy it. Don't go too crazy though, put your seatbelt on, drive safe. So the car is 150 and then another 20 for the Rolex. So you put the Rolex in the car. Have a retirement, mom. That's you, mom. It's all you. Retirement. Have a retirement. Okay. My jewelry box. One, two, three, four, five. That's for the chain I'm wearing. Can I borrow one? One, two. Can I get one more, please? Three. That's for like pinky ring, for my bracelet, tennis chains. I need one more, please. I forgot. Yeah. My brother's for life chain that we got made together. Yep. Thanks for 
And this is my gray box. 90K. I'm probably short, but we don't got a one got. What did I say about jewelry? Customized jewelry. I'm saying it again, okay? Just be just be wary. When you buy jewelry, can I will I be able to resell it? <laughs> Cause you know what? There's stories of, of uh football players selling or even NBA players selling their championship rings. Why did it get to that point? 2010, Walker was forced to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy, allegedly owing $12.7 million against only $4.3 million in assets. As part of his settlement, a judge forced the former forward to liquidate his assets, which included selling his NBA championship ring for $21,500. Stuff like this. They seem more level-headed. Like, I won't cap. Yo, they seem like, like really nice guys. But I'm just saying. Tap 100 right now, all right? God dang it. Can you hear one more? My air ring was, this was 10K itself. <laughs> Custom SG air ring with baguettes in it. And that's my jury box. I don't know about his. My jury, well, I was in the league a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about his. That is Shaquem, jury box. Shaquille's jury box. Let's do the chains first. One, one two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. 70K on chains. One bracelet, two bracelets, two for 10, a ring for 10, then I got a ring for eight. I'm gonna round it up to 10. 50,000 on bracelets and rings. Is everything right here? No. You know, maybe it's just because of me. I've been homeless at one point and I was forced to adopt minimalist principles. None of this shit even phases me no more, bro. I, mean, I have a whole video on how that occurred, how I became homeless. I, I bought like a, you know, those make money online courses. <laughs> I'll leave it in the cards up here or in the description or pin comment. But it's, if you want to see me cry, watch that video. <clears throat> I'm arguably a minimalist to the T. Everything I own right now can fit inside of a car. Straight up. I bought a Rolex my rookie year. That was 20. 10 for my earring. And 20 for my T. I didn't add that to mine. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, you got T too. So you want to put 20 on yours? I like the teeth thing because the teeth is like for facial appearance. Like I actually would want to like straighten my teeth a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Lucky. Yeah. I would say for the most part, you can't put a price on health. <laughs> you cannot put a price on your health. So I feel like dental care, stuff like that, that, anything you can fix. I think even Cardi B or some shit fixed her teeth. <laughs> or somebody, some next celebrity had teeth issues and they fixed it after they got money. So top tier. Teeth fix. Um, Let me see the teeth. Let's see the teeth. Geez. There you go. go. <laughs> I even smile when I'm mad. <laughs> That's when I knew you were smart. Because a lot of people get money and they go buy big cars and jewelry and all kind of stuff. You went and got your teeth fixed. Brother, I got something for his. You got teeth too, brother. I ain't pay for them. You want to count that up for us, brother? Yeah, let me see. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 170,000. Yeah, 170,000 in my jewelry box. Keith, you're actually at 120 because of the teeth, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> I try to keep it at 100 as much as possible. I try to keep it at 100. <laughs> we actually put some money into starting our own production company, starting our own YouTube channel. It's called uh, Shacking Up with the Griffin Twins. Everything we do outside of football to capture those moments. And that was roughly 30K. Dang. That's that shit. Come on. That's what we like to see. I love to see it. You hate to see it. <laughs> you love to see it. You hate to see it. You actually hate to see it. You love to see it. Utilizing your job or whatever to make you more money in the long run, right? Obviously, people people always talk about real estate, but the barrier for entry is usually pretty high. You need a certain amount of money, deposit to, as a down payment and stuff like that. Stock market or investments usually not too, too much of a barrier for entry, but uh, it takes you about maybe five, 10, 10 years or so to really, to really see any substantial dividend investments or dividends, essentially, from the things you've been investing over the years. <clears throat> Even with a YouTube channel, right? It's just kind of the same thing. I didn't make no money on this channel for like three, almost four years, bro. No money touched my bank account. My bank account was dry of YouTube money. Dry, <laughs> dry. Yo, yo, always, right? Things that are making me more money, 
things that I'm buying now that will save me more money long run, or if I'm buying this, it's just losing money. I'm not really getting anything from this, right? For example, a Gucci t-shirt compared to a uh, suit on game day. Different value, probably could be low-key the same price or similar price depending on the suit, right? But the suit goes with the fit, goes with the, it, it could even be a business write-off, right? <laughs> a tax write-off, because it's part of your professionalism. So you see, I see how the change in like mindset is, is different. Talk to you, I like this, I like this, I like this. You, you can throw the chef in there too. Yeah, the chef in there somewhere too. Kind of ran, ah. just kind of ran out. But um, ah. it's a couple things. Oh, it says chef. Good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> chef, your athletes, every athlete must have a personal chef, I would definitely say, because, right, your body is your business, essentially. <laughs> so that's, that also could be a tax write-off, essentially, too, right? So, top tier. Certified, I should say. We just talk about our production team. I want to make sure that you stay tuned in and follow Shacking It Up with the Griffin Twins. We invested in it for you guys so you can see it, and that's 30K right there, production. For all of our enjoyment. Seeing it in front of you, how do you feel about how you spent it? It looked like it go fast. <laughs> yeah, that um, like. It's easy to spend when you see it. That's exactly yeah. why I felt, because it's gone now, and you can't get that back. This is how we spent our first $1,027,000. So we talked about how we spent money, but we also invested money. You know, we got into a little, little bit of real estate, called it Twin Acres. You know, so we got some money put up in that too as well. So uh, we don't just spend crazy. We bought some land back home in Bradenton, 252 thousand all just the lot itself next to the water and we bought a we bought a house and the lot that we bought is that's in the little under an acre that mm -hmm. we can build and fixed on right now 325 we just put what another 75k in it getting it fixed up we getting the whole yard done we getting yeah. the, the the back of the pool and the backyard area done we thought about adding a room but that's not the, the way you do it you can't purchase and fix up houses to sell yeah. for the best interest of yourself but for the families moving in so we made sure we done that right and uh we just wanted people to see something that's a little different than seeing us playing football we do some smart things with it as well so you gotta stay smart with it. Like I said before, you put up 80 and you spend 20. You gotta do it the right way. It's good that they ended up on a good note. That real estate shit. Real estate is really hard to get into because you need the capital. But once you get in, bruh, it's like a, a snowball on an incline, you know? Like it just keeps going and going and going and boom. You get the, the benefit of the appraisal in, in value of the house, typically, right? <laughs> typically. And also the rental income that can come from every month unless you want to go the airbnb route as well but for the most part <laughs> their personality may, makes me hard to like critique them too much you know but the cars man the cars the cars the cars and the jewelry the cars and the jewelry really hurt my soul it really did hurt my soul man <laughs> let me tell you something sweetheart i don't understand i don't know how y'all do shit where you from but let me tell you something where i'm from we don't do oh, shit like that <laughs> but it's good that the fact that they put the 80 percent directly into uh, savings or I guess investments in, in this case. And just think about it, that was only 20% of the income. That's crazy. Only 20% of the income. <laughs> crazy, them, man, them athletes, man, moving mad, moving mad. It's a mad thing, it's a mad thing. The money. But yo, while you're here, watch my past video on how to get out of debt. Debt consolidation and debt settlement. My preferred way to get out of debt and arguably the fastest way to get out of debt without paying a lot of money on interest is debt settlement. If you want to know all about that and how to do it for yourself, watch the past video right here on credit card debt settlement. Or you can also watch my other video on how to lower your utility bill, your heating bill, light bill, electricity, water, all that jazz, all the above, some unknown, untold truths about lowering your utility bills right here. Watch that video right here as well. As always, if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. And too much of any good thing is good for nothing. How you look doing today, say with me. I'm doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. No cap. Flip the script. I'm out. Deuces. Pop. Act, this is not staged. You don't know what you be doing. Let me demonstrate. And tell the shorty that I like her because she got the K. It's the summertime. And I see what I be looking for like every time. Hit my line. Shorty want to turn up, so I told her fly.